in calling this meeting to order. Um, we do have the quorum confirmation. Um, you can quickly start with introductions. Um, I'll start with myself. I'm Sam Armstrong, I'm the chair of the EC, a student at IU studying environmental sustainability studies and GIS certificate. And I'll move to the right. Uh, I'm Sam Whitley, and I've been on the commission for a few years earlier now, and I'm a member of the two Hi, I'm Luke. Uh, I just I just joined. Like I think my first meeting was on uh, the last one over Zoom. Um, uh, I'm also a student at IU, and I'm studying econ and environmental science. I'm um, Don Eggert, and I'm a commissioner. Dave Parker, commissioner. I was in SPIA for about 30 years in the environmental science part. And uh, yeah, uh, I've been in Wilmington since 1973, and yesterday I went up to Lower Cascades Falls for the first time. <laughs> you went through all the construction? Yeah, with a bunch of people from, oh, okay. from the park department. So we went. Matt Caldy, Commissioner. Mike Whitman, Commissioner. Um, I will accept a motion to approve minutes from last, last meeting. So Second. Cool. Um, raise your hand if you're for it. Unanimous vote. Um, do I need to call on Terry? Raise your hand. So I have confirmation from that. There we go. Um, public comment period. It looks like no one here is in person. Do we have any people on Zoom? Ben? Does it look like it? Um, that's that. Okay, we can move on to reports now, and we will start with the Tree Commission. Um, the Tree Commission actually, oddly, has no meeting this month. And uh, Aaron was going to send the, the uh, monthly foresters report, but I haven't seen it. So I guess she hasn't sent that yet. When she does, I'll send it to you all. Great. The next one is the Monroe County Environmental Commission, and that is me. Um, I was not able to make their meeting this month, but um, they finally had one this year, and they approved their January meeting minutes. Um, and then they had um, very few items for their um, new new business, but I'll go over that quickly. They discussed Indiana State Bill. Senate Bill 411, which is the Renewable Energy Sitting Bill. And then they discussed the Bloomington Monroe County Hoosier Resilience Index. I need to get more information on that still. And they also discussed, uh, looks like a study or an article, zero in Bloomington, City of Bloomington Climate Action Site Discussion. So I will have more information for us about that. Um, I'll just send that out by email for us. And then they talked about the court ruling on the United States Forest Service Houston logging project, which I assume that is the one um, on the watershed around Lake Monroe that will yeah. be affecting it. So that's kind of important. It's not necessarily in Bloomington, but you know, keep an eye on that. Um, that was it as far as their meeting. So uh, next one we have is the ECOS update. Uh, because um, major news out of it was that uh, Lauren or uh, Clemens, who knows she's married, uh, got married, uh, switching to her husband's name, last name. But she went over and uh, they're developing a website reporting thing to assess uh, community participation with factors doing actions that relate to uh, reducing emissions, which sounded in many ways, as far as way that, that she went through the run of the, the demonstrated the software, uh, reminded me much of what we've been talking about for our wildlife corridor project, as far as uh, voluntary citizen participation. Etc. And other sort of business business related to mission activities that are, they have some resolutions that they're one on uh, um, a 
connection to environment, uh, I'm trying to remember their phraseology since I left my notebook at home. Mm -hmm. um, anyhow, one, one of the resolutions is uh, just transitions, trying to uh, have it so that low income people um, don't get left behind in essence with uh, uh, energy efficiency, et cetera. And also then their um, resolution around related to uh, uh, is it people without homes uh, versus homeless. Mm -hmm. Um, which, but then they spent both of their meeting doing an exercise on Robert's Rules of Order, which for the life of me, from the time I've been watching the, that commission, they spent more time of their meetings fiddling around with Robert's Rules of Order. Um, which I understand reason that it's a little weird. I can get frustrated. I mean, they don't have enough to do. Hmm? They don't have enough to do. That's why you spend the time doing that. <laughs> but it makes it look official, I guess. And <laughs> that's the uh, bureaucracy stamp of approval on the procedures. But um, I like our style of business. Yeah. And uh, that's enough on um, sustainability commission. Oh yeah, the thing that's a little bit concerned about the future of both us and them. So Did they have any thoughts on that? Currently from what um, Lauren said that uh, she hasn't heard anything through the administrator. Yeah. Um, so uh, the glacial speed seems to be progressing. For sure. Well, thank you for the update, Don. <laughs> um, do we have one from Iraq this month? Yes. Iraq meets every second week, as I tell you every, yeah. every month. <laughs> and, uh, we were supposed to meet a week ago on state, but because of the heavy rains, and we were meeting outside, we met yesterday instead. I have pretty extensive notes. We met at Lower Cascades, where the creek is being um, fixed up. It was sort of channelized a long time ago and has had a lot of erosion. So they've, they've now put in a lot of limestone steps. And apparently it was flooded at the top of that one. We had the two inch rain a week or so ago. Um, so I've got notes that I'll go through here. Uh, Steve Cotter was reporting that the Clear Creek Trail has a bunch of extensions that are going to it. I didn't get notes down about all of them. They're hoping eventually to have a trail that would go all the way around the city. <laughs> um, the loop trail that will go all the way around the lake. Uh, parts of that are still under construction, and much of that of it is complete. <clears throat> Next thing is uh, climate action plan implementation by the parks department. There is a parks group that meets from time to time, and they don't seem to have accomplished a whole lot yet. Um, the new business we talked about. Education, as we do every, every time. Um, there's a county cabin flower bowling this weekend. The uh, training for sixth graders at Liner Springs is, is now complete, and they met with all the sixth grade schools around the city. Um, RCA. This meeting, there's a at RCA Park, there's a meeting from 10 to 3 at Earth Day. And uh, the Monroe County Birdathon will occur on May 8th. Um, let's see. And there have been, uh, Ron Sparks mentioned a whole lot of new wrinkles that have happened 
I think she said 30 of them. And uh, they just dealt with various parts. I sent you at four o'clock this afternoon uh, two links from the Parks Department. None of them is for this document that I'll pass around. This is a, a review of changes that are going on to try to uncover a river and uh, work with a little wetland at um, Switchyard Park. But you, you can just set a look at what's there, but there's a copy of that that I sent you at four o'clock this afternoon. So there's that. And along with that, I sent you a copy of the Griffey Lake Reptile and Tribune in the Cadian Inventory that I think is done every year. There were 103 species of birds seen, including legal and osprey. Uh, in terms of reptiles and amphibians, they identified 28 out of the 51 that are known in the state. And there are some of the diseases that are getting at some of those. Where was this? Was this at all the parks put together? Or was... No, that one was at Griffin. Griffin. Yeah. Um, let's see. No, oh, basic plant management updates. There's now one person full time working on that in, in the parks department. And they did have three additional people, and they had two. Somebody dropped out. And they're working at least first at Reverend Butler. Let's see, the last thing on the agenda was. Um, the creek restoration of Lower Cascades is almost done. And there are 123 trees to be planted on May 2nd. They took out a bunch of sycamores um, that were just volunteers anyway. And our next meeting will be June 8th at Winslow Woods Park. End of report. Thank you, Dave. Oh, so we have a report for Metropolitan Planning Organizations Citizens Advisory Council from anybody. Doesn't appear so. Isn't that when does usually? Hmm? Isn't that when did you usually the question? I think so. Andrew used to do that one. We never had it. Okay. Yeah, I think they need to put Okay. I put that in there. The Metropolitan Planning. So what's that group do? I don't know. They reviewed the yeah. uh, long range transportation plan for the city, okay. recommendations, observations. Do you know how important that is? I don't know. I think last time there wasn't an update for them. So I think they meet maybe like the so other month. I might do it so. if somebody could send me some information about it. Okay. So I do that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So Dania is tentatively interested. <laughs> yeah. In it depends on how often okay. we Okay. I think it's monthly. I've looked it up before and I couldn't do it. And so after I saw the time, I couldn't do it. Is it like during the day? Um, I can't. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, we're all writing that down for that. Um, Friends of Lake Monroe? Oh, we're not active at the moment. Okay. Right? We're waiting until the grant comes in, hopefully. And uh, then I think the steering committee will. Start up again, but right now it's in that. I have a question. Yeah. Um, for Dave. Um, so the fifty billion dollars that uh, they're going to give to the EPA would that be in the to the U.S. at some point? For the water. So what you doing? The bipartisan uh, bill that was just passed for like fifty billion dollars of infrastructure. Um, it's a, and it's being given to the EPA for water infrastructure. I mean. Is that I haven't heard anything about it. Yeah, yeah. And then Dave, I have a question for you too. Um is Friends of Lake Monroe, were they looking for a new director? And have they hired one already? I doubt it. Or if they are, Maggie probably would be the person mm -hmm. that needs to come that because cool. she's so good and has all this experience. But uh, you want to check? I was just just trying to keep tabs on 
I don't know, I thought I saw they could post it out. Well, so, maybe. Um, maybe it's not like a naive and a hope. She's, she's got such experience. She's great, for sure. Yeah. As a master's in environmental engineering. I worked at Ecologic with her oh. also. Oh, yeah. So I can attest to how great a person she is. Yeah. Um, so that's it for Friends of Lake Monroe. Um, MC Iris, is that you done? Yeah, MC Iris and <laughs> Or it's literally like MC Iris in the park department. Seems like significant percentage of MC Iris members are also, uh, Linda is also one of the members. So um, a lot of, so Joanna, et cetera, et cetera. And, um, one observation um, is, Basically, over the last two and a half years of working in the parks with MCRs, um, I've become really far more of an advocate. I, I was an advocate, supportive. When Linda first explained to me when I joined the commission what the quarters project was about, but believe me, at this point, uh, I personally see its importance. Um, and just to drive home the point of the corridor, the Jackson Creek, uh, we've been working and um, trying to do restoration work in Latimer Woods, Southeast Park. Um, and the seeing the spread, and then it goes on, but then I know the Parks Department has done work further downstream on Jackson Creek. But seeing the spreading of this one invasive, I think it's from the Near East, uh, that was supposedly first introduced into North America in since uh, Cleveland in 20, uh, 1970, and now it covers the uh, lesser uh, Selenide. To see it spread um, from Chris Boulevard through Vladimir Woods, along Jackson Creek uh, near Long College Mall Road, and then uh, uh, morphs into uh, Sarah Road, and seeing it spreading through Southeast Park. Uh, it's been just two years time it's spread through Southeast Park. It's been immense. Areas that, uh, that we cleared garlic mustard and honeysuckle and Winter Creeper um, are now being invaded by that little bugger. And I know that David Dilcher's former, his wife's former garden, I've, I've talked, no, I've met the family that acquired their old condo in the Sycamore Village. It's in the village. Uh, it's really spreading, but it, it drives home the point of what, why we're committed to doing this. Um, and but on the positive side, other parts, both at Southeast Park and Lower Cascades, um, this spring, seeing the areas that have been worked on and restor restoration has been underway for a number of years now, um, to see the trilliums, to see the native wildflowers. So when I first start going through the, like, the canyon, let's say Southeast Park, walking with my dogs, um, I didn't see much in the way of anything that I considered a native wildflower. And but now seeing uh, like Colonel uh, Cutchins bridges uh, uh, and Trillium and others is it's a displacing, is it displacing the native string of ephemerals. Mm -hmm. So you're what's, seeing them showing up. What's the name of it again? Which one? The one you're talking about. The really invasive critter? Or yeah. Wesser Kel Cel 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 Yeah. Wesser what? C E L A N D I N E. I, I can see why people brought it to the United States and it's supposed to be those two families that brought it to North America and it's in Eastern Canada and it's really spread. It's very, a 
inherently difficult to change. It's all the rejection creep trail. That's hot right there. So yeah, when, I when I worked at Ecologic, we worked uh, in Holiday Park in Indianapolis on Western Selenite. And um, the main issue with it is that even if it's been controlled in a park, you know, however, you know, they spray it or whatever, if it's upstream and someone's private property, it's going to come back every year. So mm -hmm. it's really important to have an integrated management plan, including private property owners who are interested. And one of the things I'm hearing from people in my neighborhood is concerned about using herbicide. And I try to use minimal amounts of herbicide in my yard for my own recognition of being careful with herbicides and pesticides. But as one of the sustainability commissioners really got on, was ranting about the Parks Department using glycophosphate. Well, glycophosphate is used as rarely for spraying, but again, it's in tough situations where you, you're, you're having difficulty doing getting anything else to work. And we treat the stumps with that by a dabber, we don't spray it. We use dabbers, cut stump applications. Cut stump applications. And to hear her, you know, we're killing the whole universe. Well, there are people who believe that it's carcinogen. So seen that lawyer on TV <laughs> advertisement. It's it's a necessary evil. It's like it's not the best thing that exists, but it's the most effective, you know, weapon against. And her discussions the with the park staff is exactly that. And one of the things when I was looking, I, I still look at routinely follow, try to follow international news from related to science, and energy, and public policy. And uh, in one a recent study in Europe, not industry funded found no real correlation with the cancer routine. So who is right? Well, we, we can include that as a discussion point for next meeting if we want. Yeah. To yeah. get too off topic with yeah, MCIS. Uh, yeah, it's frustrating. Anyhow, that's all I have from that. Thank um, you for the update on that, Tom. Um, ECPC, now is the next one. That'd be Mike or Damian. Okay, well, uh, we met, Linda and Mike and I met um, uh, three, four days ago. I was there too. That's right, you were. Yeah, that's right, that's right. right, with your broken wrist and all that stuff. Yeah, and, I was there. Uh, yeah, she was. <laughs> so um, uh, basically, what our concern was, is what it has been, uh, that with uh, the change in Linda's uh, job description, Mm. Um, we're no letter getting uh, plans uh, from the planning department that uh, don't conform to the job. And uh, it's something that the Environmental Commission has done for years and years, and it's one of the ways that it directly contributes, I think, to you know the environmental welfare of the city. So uh, the fact that Linda is no longer able to uh, channel plans to us means that we have to find a new way. So we talked about it for a while and um, we came up with two ideas. One was to create a checklist, uh, hopefully to be used by the planning department, of things that they ought to think about when they're looking at the environmental aspects of any plan. And, and so I don't know if that was just for the UDL or just for planning department approval, but um, that was one idea. And the second idea, there is, um, uh, a division coming up to the UDO, uh, I think it's on, uh, well, the first read is April 22nd, right? The council, the planning commission's already passed. Yeah. yeah, and I think the council is going to do their first read in May. So the timing is very compressed. Um, and one of the things that, uh, one of the changes to the UDO that they're considering is a revised list of trees, which Unfortunately, it was not run by the tree commission, which I think is, is a problem. Um, so we were thinking that we might be able to piggyback uh, a, a, 
proposal of our own uh, on the assumption that if we went to the council with just one line we wanted to add the video, they would laugh us out of the building. And so that would be a, a statement to the effect that um, uh, we would like the planner in charge of a proposal that doesn't meet the criteria of the EEO to uh, routinely give a copy of it to the Environmental Commission so that the ECDC could do its work. Um, and let's see, and oh, actually the language which Mike supplied is that um, it would be uh, proposals that had site-specific concerns. For instance, riparian buffers. Um, because we can karst the topology. We've got a lot of that kind of stuff in this, uh, this community. Though. So um, I think what we want to do, and I might be jumping here in time, is um, we want to come up with a list of items that would go on the checklist that the planners could use. And we also want to come up with a list of potential site specific concerns so they have an idea of what we're thinking about. Uh, understanding that neither of those would be exhausted at this point. And um, so I think the idea is that we're going to, when Mike and Linda and Dave and I are happy with what we have got as a draft, we would send it to the whole EC, ask for everybody's input, um, see if we can get a draft, pretty much put it knocked into uh, final form. Um, electronically and then have a quick and dirty um, special session where you come in and vote and then you leave. So it'd be like a 10 minute meeting. So I think that's, yeah. does that cover most yeah. of it? Which has to be advertised. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, need about a week. Is that what you're thinking, Matt? Yeah, I wish Linda was here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I, I think that, I think yeah. that's right. Yeah, because I think she would just have to be on schedule and that means. I can, I can have her set up. Cool. And what we really ought to do, if we want to meet our deadline, is to actually set the, the date now no, and then work like little bunnies to get it done. <laughs> so, I mean, do we want to meet next Thursday or Friday? You know, is that too early? Or I don't think so. Uh, what do you... Well, we've got two weeks. Uh, next Thursday could be tentative, and I guess you could always, you know, carry a postponement by. Okay. Well, um, I, I know for a fact I can't do it Thursday, but we don't need to make a quorum. I mean, we just need to make sure we have a date that they enough people well. can do. And um, do we have to? I read through the document that we're supposed to look at tonight, the electronic meeting policy. And if we take a vote on this, do we all do we vote on this with some people being virtual? I think virtual people are able to vote as long as they gave Linda. Uh, ample notice, and so she said three days. Three days. Carrie, did you give Linda three days? I think I told her yesterday. Okay. Um, so you might not be able to vote on this one, Ben. Do you know? I'm not sure. No. Okay. Yeah. We'll just play it safe. I I assume we'll be fine either way. The only way. other so. stipulation was they have to be visible, which she is. Yeah. Okay. So she met at least one of those conditions. <laughs> okay. Well then. I, I like to remember from, so, from what I remember. Yeah, I, I read the whole thing. Like like, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. And so. we have to be visible to her. Yeah. Yeah. She, she's on the center. Top. Center. Um, oh, <laughs> so I'll send out uh, one to me. Uh, Link, do you guys like those where you type in your name and you select the calendar when you're able to meet? And Are we not allowed to use um, do Doodle? Do anymore? That's oh, that. Yeah. Oh, okay. So this one's just as intuitive to yeah. use. So I'll send that out well, this weekend. And so we can, you know, is that okay? If we wait for two weeks, that's the fifth. That might be a little too late. I don't think it's going to take that much time. I mean, if you could just sit down and do yeah. it. We just need to beat the 11th, right? Is that, yeah. Is that the the 28th. Yeah. Well, wait a minute. Today's the 21st, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you want it next Thursday? That's the 28th. Early and then we can postpone if we have to. Well, it's going to take each person five minutes. Yeah, because we may not be ready. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we should have, first of all, uh, are you, do you know the, the uh, acronyms that we've been using here? I've been trying to keep up. I'm still a little bit new, so. Yeah. 
the CPC is the Environmental Commission Planning Committee. The EDO is the Unified Development the Zoning Ordinance. Um, I suggested from the start of this that we should meet the planning director first and discuss this with him before we're going to city council. And we've procrastinated on that and haven't done it. So I'd like to try to cram that in okay. uh, before we take a vote on this. And, you know, maybe we'll try to set up a meeting with him. Yes. Do that early next week if possible. That's a big ask. Understand a lot better where we're at on this discussion with him. Yeah, I don't think we've been procrastinating. I think we've been um, trying to be sensitive. Will yeah. Will you three meet with him, or what? Just one of you guys? I'll go if anybody else wants to. They're welcome. I'd be welcome. I mean, I'd be happy to be. Yeah. Let you guys figure out. Okay, once we set up, maybe we can do that by email because I don't have my calendar here to set up. But maybe we'll meet him. You want to email me either? Uh, yeah. Tomorrow. Because I'm not sure if I'm just going to be here, but I'll be in the office tomorrow. So Actually, next week I may be going down to my wife's farm to conduct it for three days. So. Well, I can go with you, Mike, if you'd be, be better if they did. Don, you raise your hand. Yeah, in the back of my head, I remember one of the some kind of, I don't remember the, the specifics, but the general gist of it is that somebody did a development. And they were supposed to have uh, planted native species. And then we found out that they didn't live up to their what we said to them. And you know, we're, 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 there's so many issues that involve biodiversity, climate change, etc., that get back into the this problem with invasive species. You know, some idiot developer decides to put in some more cow repairs. Meanwhile, we're trying to come up with ways to get rid of them. Um, it's totally counterproductive if we don't get some way of seeing what is in some of these plans. And, you know, and I think maybe Linda had said that there's very minimal enforcement. Yeah, they don't have like the staff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Enforcement's another issue. Linda was doing that in her own way. That's what we'll lose. You know, she's going through a fine tooth, tooth comb and checking to see if everything's right. We just don't have anybody there to do that. Yeah. And the other thing is, is and we've seen this too, is that they'll put something in the plan and then do something else and get on the ground. So. I have a question for you, Dania. Um, when you were speaking a few minutes ago, you mentioned that um, ECPC wants to ask for um, um, updates, regular updates from the planner. When you say planner, you mean the city developer planners. or the city planner? City planner. City planners. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, one other option we have on this is that the, the plan commission website hosts the uh, plan commission packet. In advance of the meeting, and that packet includes the staff report and the staff recommendations. So we can look at that. It also includes a lot of information from the developer. So we can look at all that and maybe get some information that we need from that. Just it's going to be not very long before the planning commission. Have you guys had an update on Elm Heights um, development at all? We're not Elm Heights, the um, Heights. I, I don't know what you're talking yeah. about. I can't think of it. Yeah, Ivy Chase. Ivy Chase, sorry. Yeah. No updates on that yet. Okay. Um, well, I will monitor my email and, um, you know, I'll wait till Monday to hear or Tuesday to hear from you guys to see if you need a little bit more time before sending out um, a link for the discussion session. So um, we'll just be in communication about that. Is there anything else you guys want to say about ECPC? I just want to say with the resolution, uh, the folks out there ask to be 50% of people in person. Um, with the special meeting? Yeah, a person can't come two times, or more than two times in a row on Zoom, um, and it is three days. Three days notice for a special session? Yeah. Okay, so we could organize that pretty quickly then. So let's, let's hold on. The, thing, right the point I was trying to make, which you might not have said very well, is that it's it's not a lot of words. Yeah. Um, just yeah. it's going to be really short. So if everybody just 
looks at the email when they get it and does their work right then, it yep. won't take us long. Just come in, you know, can't get out of here. Well, we'll see. Yeah. Great. Well, that sounds good. So um, just, just let me know when you guys are ready and I'll schedule a session, okay. special session. So that is it for our reports. Um, our next segment of the meeting is discussion from active working groups. First one is the biodiversity working group. Um, for the uh, first section, Ben, do you want to give us an update on that? Yeah, I mean, again, I don't have too much. I'm just going to be finishing up the the habitat activity plan. So when I leave, that you'll be able to continue forward with it. Um, the map directions are up. Sam, I think, took a look at it and understood it. Um, the problem is, you do need a Google account for it. So if you don't have a Google account, you won't be able to access the map. Um, so I think I need to make that more clear in the instructions. We might try to access it. And, uh, yes. Okay, go ahead. Okay. I was just going to say that the brochure is finished. Uh, the pledge is done. Uh, as long as I need to, I just need to really paste the map starting to finish. Um, and then the map is done as well. So we should have all parts of that decorated. One thing that was on, not on the ERAX agenda, but which I learned about, um, I think it was Joanna Sparks, who's the city of the plan department's main botanist. Uh, she says that they had something called Adopt the Green Space, a program, and it sounds like exactly what we're looking for when we're, we're asking for people to. Uh, yeah, that does. Like it it's, sounds like exactly. Yeah, I'm, I'm part of that yeah. Dr. Green space, and it's for public uh, areas like uh, Bryant Park. Oh, it is. So I'm adopting oh, Bryant Park. I see. And so okay. I'll be managing invasives through that, yeah. working with the parks department. But we're obviously asking for private property owners to, you know, make a pledge to. Okay, I'm missing a great concert. Yeah. It sounded to me. Uh, I was gonna say like. <laughs> That's concerning. All, all this work is gonna <laughs> so similar but distinct. Okay. So my my adopted child is uh, Southeast Park. So I was actually in the um, onboarding um, PowerPoint. I was on the onboarding uh, meeting for adopted green space, and they had some pictures of people from M MC Iris, and you were in one of those pictures, Don. So. <laughs> Um, he lives there. He's there. <laughs> um, yeah. About a five minute walk, less than a five minute walk from the park. But one of the things I found by like, working in the park, I've been also, besides pitching, getting rid of the basic plants, I've been pitching the wildlife biodiversity yeah. plant yeah. and explaining the, how they, these things go together. And uh, I, I realized that for some people, it's going to be a, that's our project is going to be a tough sell to get people to actually support it. But I think a lot of it just comes down to how educated people are about the program and the benefits of mm -hmm. it to the environment. Uh, I had a bad experience yesterday, a really bad experience. And I left a very very bitter taste in my mouth about a specific um, homeowners association. Well, I'm curious to hear about that after. <laughs> um, <laughs> so the uh, next part about the biodiversity working group, uh, we talked briefly about the next steps of um, what we'd be doing, you know, after the habitat connectivity plan. Not that that would be over, just since we got the you know, run of the work out of the way. Um, we were kind of theorizing about what we could do after that. And we loosely talked about um, sort of helping connect all of the different environmental basic species control groups and booms in Monroe County, like mm -hmm. MC Iris Canopy, um, all the arborists that are helping with the rapid pair removal, <coughs> Bluestone, um, actually talked with um, Seth Inman, 
I forget the name of his company, but he's a big arborist in town. I talked to him at Sage Fest about that too. Bluestone? Seth Inman. So with Bluestone? Or? He's not with Bluestone, but. There's, there are two companies that responded to MCI versus. Uh, one of them is Bluestone and one of them, another one is like Arbor. I've no people, I've had Bluestone work on my own yard, so. One of them is Bluestone, and I forget the other one, but I think they're giving like 15% off. Norman Arbor Care. Yeah, Arbor Care. Norman Arbor Care, $100 off of Bluestone, 15%, which is going to come to something similar. So, I mean, that's a really good start. You know, MC Iris, I think, is integral in doing that. But what we were thinking in the um, biodiversity meeting is that there's sort of an ad hoc approach to this throughout the uh, mm -hmm. city and county. So we're thinking of ways that we might be able to sort of call a super group meeting and see if, you yeah, know, wonder that. about groups like, uh, do we have a book of mine? Correct, do, do we have a local uh, uh, Sierra Club? Sierra, well, that besides Sierra Club, uh, Audubon. We got Audubon. Um, I want to think about the little bit more militant group. Uh, it's Green first. Pardon? Green Peace or Green Peace, yeah. Do we have a local Green Peace? <laughs> Indiana Forestry Alliance. Forest mm -hmm. They're not very militant, yeah. yeah. I guess compared to those others, they're the activists. They're good direct action. We really should be working together. So um, that's something that we were going to speak about um, yeah. in our next meeting was how to tangibly organize something like that. Um, that is it for the next steps of the biodiversity working group. And then the next one is the Becky progress update. Ben, or do you want to update? Uh, no progress. <laughs> but um, I have all that inside this meeting. Cool. Um, I'll get to it before. For sure. Mm -hmm. um, the next one is the Eco Heroes Working Group, last minute specifics. Um, is anybody on that? I think most of us are. Well, I think so, we will yeah. have an update. I'm not sure if everyone knows, but we're not doing it in person yeah. because we did not have enough people that actually participated in that event. Um, so what we're doing is a PowerPoint like last year, and uh, people are going to come in and pick up prizes. I was organizing the certificates today. Right there. They're here. <laughs> so um, all the prizes are laid out. I think when the wants to buy maybe like $100 more of prizes. Um, we have like over a thousand dollars left. So, uh, is that for Eco Heroes or for our EC budget? No, specifically for Eco Heroes okay. because we got money last year and the year before, and we just have a lot of overnight spot. So, uh, for sure. It's not the worst thing to have. Not the worst thing, exactly. So, those will be finished uh, on Friday. And, uh, next week, we're inviting people to come. I got one response uh, from your partner. Uh, but I think I need to call up the rest of the people just so tomorrow, just to make sure that they don't go to uh, the line set on Saturday and not be like, where is it? So I have everyone's number, so I'll give them a call now. Cool. Thank you, Ben. Um, and then uh, we have an update on the air quality working group. Um, I'll speak about that for a few seconds and I'll let you talk about air quality monitors. Um, we met uh, like three and a half weeks ago. I think our next meeting is, uh, it might be this Sunday actually. Is it actually set? What? Have we told it's not set. So, I, you know, um, I'll send an email about that too. If we can That's Phil Stevens, that he would attend at least originally. Professor yeah. Stevens is an air quality guy in the field. Yeah. Well, if he's going to attend, then we should probably cater to him. Also. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we, be we can maybe be more flexible than just meeting on Sunday with them. So um, I can send out a when to meet link for that. That works for you guys. Okay. Or if you just know when he's available, we can. I have no idea. I think he might just come and spread it first and okay. for us to ask questions. And then once we finish, we can come and leave. I don't know. <laughs> So that'd be my 
Um, yeah, well, that's a great resource, you know, for us to be working with um, as a professor. Um, in addition to that, um, we talked quickly about Carlisle Brake Factory, um, about some funky smells coming from there. I did some research on that and I found that um, there's been a history of Bloomington residents specifically complaining about workers from that factory. What is the name of that? Carlisle, Carl C A R L I S L E. What do they make? They uh, make brakes <laughs> and industrial friction um, equipment. So, uh, it's like that fruit type place. That is on Woodlawn and um, Hillside, Hillside Park. between Weatherstone and Hillside off of Woodlawn. Okay. Caddy Corner, southeast of Bryan Park. You it's your sharpest person. Yeah, you know, Sharpest Sharpest yeah. Sharpest in this place, and I think they used to make um, spark plugs. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it was just interesting to see that, you know, there's been uh, a history of complaints about that, and I even found some correspondence, some historical correspondences between concerned Bloomington residents and City Council uh, member Eastville Piedmont's. Smith, she was pretty responsive about it and concerned. Uh, she at one point actually worked with two different IU professors about, you know, maybe what was in um, the output coming from the factory. And I don't have their names. I can try and find them, but I think that, you know, raises um, some somewhat concerning level of concern about what's going on. Do you know anyone? Um reported on the DPA. Um, is there is a function that allows you to, to uh, report directly to the DPA about any I think maybe a few ones have happened recently, but um, I don't know historically if before we started with, if there have been any. Um, but, but they did report to the DPA at least once. Yeah. So, and they didn't find anything. Um, what I read is that the EPA passes those off to IDEM, and IDEM has an air quality office, and they have, if they get enough reports, they send someone out. And I don't know how auditory or official those meetings are, how hard the time they give them or not. Um, and I know the EPA sort of keeps track on, you know, what chemicals they're using there and stuff, but, um, you know, I, I think there hasn't been any talk or action about Carlisle in a while. So, um, it's just interesting as I live near there and I, I yeah. smell that terrible burning rubber solid smell, like at, at least weekly. So, um, that's all I have for air quality. Then, um, you might have a little bit about monitors. Yeah. So, I don't know when we're going to get the new monitors. Uh, we haven't talked about it with Scott in a couple weeks, but I was thinking that we might as well just see this address it here. Um, so that as soon as we get it, we can just give the people that are interested that want to carry it around for a little bit of time. Yeah. And then to walk you this car out and make yeah. it out. So Sam, is there anyone else interested in just carrying around a monitor with them? Uh, it's really it's like a small little black thing that hooked up to a backpack. It's really, really easy. We address it at some point, but maybe not initially. Okay. Yes. <laughs> cool. So yeah, actually, if, if you find yourselves walking around anywhere that you notice might be um, have the air quality impacted regularly, that would be good regular data data for us. So. Also, just whoever goes around Wilmington frequently is yeah. I think it, the battery, if you hook it up to Bluetooth, it will not last all day for sure, but if don't hook it up to the Bluetooth, it should last most of the day. Um, and you can upload the data connected. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So uh, that's good information. Thank you, Ben. So that is it for air quality working group, unless anyone else has anything on that. Um, okay, on to new business. Um, Looks like Linda included to, for us to have a quick discussion on ways to support removal, removal of calorie pear trees. Um, I think we basically just talked about that in our uh, biodiversity working group update. Um, unless anybody has 
you know, any thoughts on that or anything? Well, one of the things that's of concern to me, and this is why I won't name the homeless group, association, neighborhood association. Um, the best book and deal right now is the uh, uh, Bluestones, uh, but it requires that you get a number of people in, it, in an area, which means getting a neighborhood association to work to get together uh, so that you know you have the, the equipment doesn't have to go drive all over the city. They can go bang, 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 bang. Yeah. Um, so getting this word the neighborhood association becomes critical. So hard. Yeah. So it's important for neighborhood associations to be on board with this. But, you know, from talking to my neighbors to have them in their yard, um, I've talked to two families um, who, well, one, what are we this kitty corner from my house? And I know there are others like them. And there's one also that I've talked to not as often. Uh, that was literally next door to the park in Montclair. And I understand that they probably will be a financial burden for them because of the size, the ferry, particularly the one on my street, is a really sizable cavalry pair. It's a big one. And, but the other one is close behind and then across the street. Now I haven't talked to that family yet, but I have talked to a couple other you know, families that, but, you know, I understand the financial issues. And, you know, MC Iris and Parks Department has been saying, like, you know, and I think it was Joanna, basically, you know, we were trying to keep these things out of our places like Southeast Park and Lower Cascades, et cetera, et cetera. And um, we need to have some priority. Um, and, you know, I want to firmly believe in environmental justice as far as Bill Gates can do whatever he wants to do, you know, because he's got bucks. But if you're a modest income family, uh, and you're you know, talking well over a brand to take out a, a, a tree, without even thinking of putting out a plant with a, a cost for a new tree would be relatively minor. But, and believe me, um, today and last Thursday, Today, we were not treating the stumps in lower cascades that we were cutting down with salary pairs. So last week, as we, as we were going along, one of the park staff, Jillian Field, was, was treating the stumps as we cut them down. Uh, seeing them in the park and recognizing that the ones we could easily spot are the ones old enough now to be flowering at this time of the year. But next to them are the seedlings, and they're harder to see. And it's impossible to get up. And uh, they're tough. They're tough. And you know, I'm used to cutting with my uh, saw of uh, Asian bush honeysuckle. Uh, to, to cut a calorie pair of the same diameter, basal diameter, is takes a lot more energy and time than it does to cut down the same size um, calorie pair. So I assume that people who looked into grant funding, like from the Environmental Protection Agency or, or something, because that's where we get the environmental justice. We need, we need grant money. Yeah, yeah. So are we, are we talking here about just our habitat corridor or the whole city? It's going to probably have to say the whole city. Yeah. Okay, I just want to share with Yeah, because uh, the, 
you know, one of the ways that it gets spread is by our birdie friends who, but they are popping up in our corridor. I don't know. Uh, oh, there, yeah, there's even one in Griffith that I that we cut down. Uh, well, fruit wood is a lot denser than the pithy yeah. um, honeysuckle. But speaking of grants, you know, I've talked about this a bit before, but you know, I've looked at the Bloomington grants for invasive renewable, and um, they're even more modest than the uh, uh, discounts being given out for the um, calorie pair renewable by the organizations working with MC Iris. So, um, you know, Bloomington has a small and simple grant. It's through hands. It's five hundred dollars for a neighborhood for a group of for a neighborhood. Yeah, for a group of you know ten or more people to buy tools. For supplies. Yeah, yeah, for yeah. supplies. So um, that's maybe something we want to think about is making a letter in support of the city, wherever they can get the funding from. You know, providing greater grants for this type of work. I've also heard that it's. Under that grant. So, yeah. yeah. One of the frustrations I've had is I tried to pitch it to my own homeowners association and they blew me off. They blew it off completely. And the idea of the grant would be I mean, ironically, the neighborhood association that has used that funding wisely has been blue rich. And what they did with the money was they basically cut a bunch of honeysuckle and other invasives down, and they run into chipper to use the 500 bucks to have a chipper and get rid of uh, the, you know, the, the cuttings. That's what I love. Yeah. We still got that for pairs. And, you know, but so the problem is, is that the city can't take down trees on private property. And that's why an organization like MC Iris has to be engaged. Yeah. And, yeah. and that's why MC Iris needs to but go to the federal government and look mm -hmm. for grants because you're going to need a million bucks. Federal grants. Yeah. yeah. Not even a state grant. Okay. $500 a neighborhood is not going to do for it's, it's, you know, sticking your finger in the dike of yeah. the, the hurricane Katrina. Yeah. Um, um, what MCRS is funding right now, I mean, now the, the, the tax exempt, they're hoping to get people to make donations. Uh, unfortunately, you know, Bill Cook's not around anymore to maybe this local potential donor. But um, the Funding that we have available is largely from last fall's plant sale. And again, it's not a large chunk of money, but we're, we are talking about trying to figure out ways to be most effective with using it and you know, coming up with schemes to provide seedling trees to, to replace what has been removed. Have you talked with MC Iris about, or has MC Iris talked about finding federal grants? Or I don't ones? know whether uh, Alan or uh, Julian have actually thought about that, but I kind of wondered myself. I, I was, as a geologist, I'm not. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm not that familiar with who even might be willing to fund it. I don't know even whether there are a bunch. Bunch of things. I just Googled it. Um, there's a Midwest invasive plant network. I think it just means somebody needs to sit down and do it. So a lot of those are also in the same boat as MCI or the amount of money that they yeah. have. Right. But you know what they say about the lottery? <laughs> you can't win if you don't win. <laughs> yeah, I, I, it's, I'm so sorry. I'm tired of people that will talk about environmental or climate. The climate crisis, but yet they don't themselves don't do anything. And with one of my neighbors, I had was going like they had a bizarre conversation last week about, well, the trees are pretty. What harm are they? 
they force out the native species, they form monocultures. There's a property in the southwest of Bloomington that is now a square mile of essence solid gallery pair. Smith Road. Hmm? The one on Smith Road. Yeah. Um, and that is grossed out for long termers yeah. with, with MCRs and grossed out by that property. So that's a good update on that. I was just going to ask if you had a grant. Um, you said, was that just for equipment? Because it's pretty it's much, yeah. It's, it's not a flexible grant and you can't apply it to something else specifically for equipment. Right. Yeah, I don't think but it can so be paid towards like a neighborhood of $500. That's half a tree. Cool. The contractor, yeah. I don't know, if could receive it in the first place. And if they could, that's enough to get them to show up and right. I mean, I guess take a look around and leave. Yeah. I'd rather have half, half of my tree removal paid for than to say, well, you have to use that on the saw or on the yeah, this you know, minimum, of, or, or a minimum of like eight or 15 mm -hmm. people or something like that in one neighborhood. So, and it would be yeah. harder to, um, to arrange, to organize, but I also don't see why uh, NHOA would have to be involved at all if you had a group of citizens in the same neighborhood. I think those private citizens could yeah. take advantage of the bluestone deal just the same because I know it was an increasing percentage with the number of trees. So you just take door to door. But you don't actually need you know, organizations to approve on that. I don't think it would just be private citizens all deciding to remove the cattle repairs at the same time. I can tell you at least one person in that neighborhood who would, who would probably be interested in that if he had a quote fewer than the or you know, lower than the eight hundred dollar quote that he received. Eight hundred for what? One big cattle repair in front of That's one of the smaller prices for. A, Somebody just spoke through this chainsaw and knock one out in, in a couple of minutes. Yeah, but they have to haul it off site. They have they have the machine pick it up and the big trucks and the chipper and the man hour person hours. It's, it's, it's a geologist. As a geologist, and when I had my own research grants, I had one of the big expenses I had, that I had was the mobilization. These the drilling companies would charge just to get to the site. Right. And but you know, last Friday we went up to join to go with our uh, our daughter and son in law our granddaughter to the, to the children's museum. And the thing that grossed me out was how Indianapolis was like Bloomington planted bloody yeah. bloody bears all over the place. So uh, speaking of grants, um, at SageFest, I ran into congressional candidate Isak. Um, I don't know his last name, that's just what he goes by, but he and I were talking about um, invasive control and stuff like that. I was talking to him about the uh, need of more money for people um, to be able to apply to this because it's, it's way too expensive for everybody to you know, pay out of pocket for this. And he mentioned that he might be able to pass along the name of really uh, high quality grant writer to me that I can maybe yeah, give that information to MCIRS. So um, yeah. I think that might be it for uh, this item right here. Okay, the, final, the final point I would say yeah. would be what we already know, just tell everybody you know, put it on your social media, do whatever, boost MCRS's yeah. thing, pass out the flyers, just yeah. get, get everybody in on it as much as you can. Yeah. That's all we really have the power to do. That's how we bring it. Did you have something to say? Okay. So that's it. New business, on to old business now. Um, first item is the letter of support on the polypropylene erosion turf netting. Did everybody get an uh, opportunity to look through that? since yes. last meeting right here. I will accept a motion to vote on it. So vote for us move. Second. Second. Okay, everybody in support of it, uh, please raise your hands. You got any unanimous passing of that? One uh, other comment on that. Go ahead, Dave. I think that was not on the agenda at uh, ERAC yesterday, but when, when we went walking up to the falls afterwards, there on the ground was a big pile, oh, about this long, about this big round of that netting. 
and um, it had been taken out. By just sitting there? It was just sitting there, and John and Sparks said, boy, we'd like to get rid of that, and we told her we were trying to do that, so we can get the Parks Department to, to support us in this. Yeah. Well, that'll be the next step after we adopt this formally. So, mm -hmm. um, that and, is, yeah, go ahead. My experience with pulling uh, seedling um, privet and uh, Asian bush honeysuckle out of that mess. It's just a mess. It, uh, it's no easy way to do it. <laughs> it makes it much more difficult. Uh, over in Southeast Park, as well as in Adamant Woods, I've run into places where yeah, it's there and it's like. Oh, oh, oh. Somebody commented that this, we won't buy that, but the trap snakes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Trap, I'm sorry. The trap, trap snakes. snakes. That's the yeah. most sort of species to have, too. So, mm -hmm. um, well, you know, I'm really glad that we. You know, voted in support of that, so it's a good first step for and, this. So and, let's see how it's I agree received. Linda, particularly because of the yeah. microplastics. Yeah. So it's a mess that switch yard too. It's in the um, the actual fenced in dog park areas. When I used to bring my dog there last year, it was coming up. Yeah, and sometimes the dogs, you know, pull it up. They get their feet stuck on it. And people yeah. trip on it. You know, I throw as much as I could away to come up loose. So it's, you know, they didn't pull it up. So. I think I've lost my copy of that letter. Can somebody send it to me and I'll send it on to the parks department? Yeah. Can yeah. You do that? Yes, I will. Okay, thank you. Let me write that down really quick. <laughs> okay. okay. So that is it for that item. Um, I'll give an update on the Sage Fest that we uh, tabled at at Bloomington South last Friday afternoon. That actually went really well. Um, it's really cool to see how many high schoolers came out in support of that uh, organization. It was the first annual festival they had. Um, there was also a uh, canopy project was there. Friends of Lake Monroe was there. Um, Brian and Andrea's, um, it's not called Green Camino anymore, but that city composting program, I forget what it's called. Um, they were there and um, Sunrise Bloomington, which is a student group, student environmental group at IU was there and um, Blooming Labs was there and it, it went really well. We gave away some of the uh, habitat connectivity pamphlets then. Um, and then we had the large um, stat poster right there. Do you want to hold that up? Sorry, put you on the spot. That's our Bloomington Consolidated Green Spaces map that the, I think that's the inspiration for the connectivity map right yeah. there. So that got a lot of viewers. This is the original one. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so uh, we had that out and we had some information about the um, Bradford Pear removal program right there. <laughs> Sorry, you want to hold that one up too. So we were giving those away to students and telling them to bring those to their parents <laughs> because, you know, high school students aren't really property owners, but a lot of their parents are. So um, I think that was a win for us right there. There's actually a decent amount of people in the first half before the uh, punk band started playing and it's too loud to talk. <laughs> um, <laughs> so if we do it again next year, bring your plugs. But um, it was also supposed to be outside and it was held inside. So there is no um, release of the sound. It was just an echo chamber. But um, also Kim Novak from SPIA spoke and uh, a few other speakers, and it was just it's really inspiring. I think it's a good, good program to have. So, um, Carrie or Ben, unless or Carrie or Matt, unless you had anything to say, we can move on from that. So, 
I was just going to add that I believe they said this was the first one they've done, which yeah. makes it really exciting for future years just to think about um, how much it'll keep growing. But yeah, it was a great experience. I came away from it just feeling really positive about the, the community that was there and all the organizations that were there. And I felt like our table really represented with our, our pamphlets and our maps. I think we did a really good job of getting people interested in what we were talking about. Definitely. Thank you for organizing that, Carrie. Um, the next item is the handbook revision update. I think that is Linda and Ben, unless you're able to cover that. Yeah, no, I didn't know so, she was going to miss this meeting until about 542. So um, I didn't get the revision yet, but um, I can send everyone an update of like highlighted stuff that I think they should be aware of. Seems like it's relatively minor. But um, Ben, after you send that out, everybody, please make sure you look at that because I believe we'll be voting on that next meeting, as far as I can tell from that email that Linda sent out. So um, she said we don't need to vote on it tonight. Yeah, yeah. Um, that is it for old business. Uh, Commissioner announcements. Does anybody have anything they want to share? Yeah, I kind of put something up on the board, but I actually mentioned this last meeting, but um, since we don't have a chat function anymore, mm -hmm. That readable. Mm -hmm. um, this is the lane gauge business that I told you about before. Uh, by the lane gauge, it's about this big around, and then it has a little tube down the middle that goes up to one inch, and it's, it's got marks for every hundredth of an inch. And um, this, if you join this, Boy, that really isn't very dark, is it? If you join the system, uh, the rain gauge costs about $50 with shipping. And you're supposed to, um, they want you to measure the rain at 7, 7 a.m. every day, but um, you can pick a different time, and that's at 8 o'clock. And I still would try to sleep through that sometimes, but, but I, I don't anymore. And um, so I've had my rain gauge for about 20 some days. And every day I go out at eight o'clock and, and see what's in there. And today we had between eight o'clock yesterday and eight o'clock this morning, we had 29 hundredths of an inch. And then you report this. I think there, I think if I understood right, there are already 43 people in Monroe County doing this. And they're put to use by the National Weather Service, by flood control people, and there's a list of about 10 or 15 kinds of people that use this data. So, so it's like a citizen scientist sort yeah, of program. Right, exactly. Decentralized, right. that's really cool. Yeah. It's kind of neat. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm enjoying it. Yeah, it's, it's really cool. It's all over the country. Um, and I think there's like four people that go to work in, correct? Uh, other people that do, I, I thought I saw 43 in the county, I mean, the county but I think there, there's not too many in Williams. Oh, okay. Well, one of, the, one of the things that's really going back to when we had the fatal flash flood was the National Weather Service gauge failed. I uh, believe that we had that well, was a flood during, during that rain or before it. That failed it down for a while. Okay. It, it, it had failed. And so uh, the data that came out of that was pretty much all the county had to work with. Yeah. And uh, uh, one of the people I've been communicating a lot with has been uh, Christy Lindbergh. And um, Reality, folks, is that uh, we may be having more issues with these types of events. Oh, yeah. And baseline data, um, 
begin with sea changes. I mean, this is going to be this is about media a year, and it's supposed to continue into summer. Um, and I think every month this year so far, and I'm trying to remember December's, but I I look at the National Weather Service monthly reports for Central the Central Indiana from uh, the Indianapolis Post that every shortly after the first of the month, uh, previous month's data. And uh, there's been times when we've been really quite a bit above our long-term average. Mm -hmm. Yeah. National Weather Service report online for phone is the data come from the airport. Yeah, so it's not the city. <laughs> the Monroe County Airport, very yeah. far west side. Right. Yeah. Several miles out of Monroe. Years ago, it came from the power plant. Oh, mm -hmm. but now uh, it comes from the airport. Yeah. Well, it makes more sense because that, that's where the coal power plant function of the National Weather Service gets into their, 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 their operations and safety. So mm -hmm. uh, there is a reason for that. But, isn't quite willing to. Uh, when my wife's farm was in Frankfort, Kentucky, and the National Weather Service data there comes from the Frankfort report as well. So I did a uh, hydrological GIS analysis on that flood we had last June, where most of that accumulated on Kirkwood, and mm -hmm. um, and most of the watershed that contributes to the flooding. Uh, you know, around Kirkwood Avenue um, actually comes from campus. So um, Andrew and I actually just finished co-authoring a uh, column directed at IU to invest in green infrastructure and riparian buffers to help modulate so, the runaway stormwater um, flooding from campus during these major... They are months. beginning a major renovation on the campus river in like in front of they, they're adding limestone edges to it, which is actually going to decrease water absorption and increase water velocity down the street, which is actually worse. So, <laughs> the giant construction project in town is supposed to improve the range. So, so and I, I took a picture of that actually was in front of Taste of India uh, a few days ago, and all they're doing is increasing the underground stormwater tunnel that. Um, capacity of it, but the, the major drawback of that is it has a static um, capacity. At one point, when it gets over that, 100% of the water is going to go over, you know, over that into the road. So what we really need is green infrastructure and native trees and riparian areas to absorb that water before it gets to the big tunnel. One of the things I've been following uh, from the BBC and the Guardian has been the windowing of London. And one of the things that boos that Wilmington did was that they basically boxed in the creek. I mean, there, there have been so many, uh, we, we moved here year after you got here. And so many times the earthquake has flooded. Um, and I'm trying to remember somebody from the city was was really dissing one of the city people wasn't Christy, it was somebody else. I remember who one of the one of the city people I know was going on a rant about the fire department rebuilding at their present location. Yeah. Um, um, um that was stupid. Sure. Sure. If they do they'll rebuild there, but just if the next flood, we may as well, we may as well buy. Yeah, well, they, well, they're trying to move, but they can't find a the place they can afford. Before everybody leaves, I just want to have one last announcement. Um, I believe we're having the director of the Conservation Law Center next month. Um, still have to meet. Double check that when that happens. Um, she, she and I have um, uh, requested that he give us a presentation next month on the Indiana Sentinel Landscape Program.
which has you know some possibly big ramifications for environmental funding in Bloomington and surrounding area. So make sure you're here for that one. Uh, I forgot to mention this this uh, draft that we sent around to Dominion put together about the ECPC prep plan. I've printed several copies of it. Okay. Well. Yeah, can you pass that out to each of us? Yeah, I, I also sent it by email. Oh, that. yeah. Oh, well, well, so, our so. But if anybody wants to print a copy now, whatever. With that, does anybody have any other personal announcements? No, uh, the meeting is officially adjourned. So, you're free to leave.